Hey y'all, it is nighttime, isn't it? We've been out on the farm working in the pastures, haven't yeah, we, baby? I had to fix some fences this <laughs> evening. Fix fences today, Sunday, and we had to fix fences, but we did go to church this morning and had us a big lunch and a nap, so then we worked till dark on fences, water troughs, feeding cattle, counting cattle. We had some get out while we were at church this morning. Your mama called yeah, fussing. Yeah. and she was like, where are y'all, where are y'all? So anyway, we got all that done and we came in and we thought we'd cook um, Sunday supper as breakfast, breakfast right? Yeah. Breakfast for mm -hmm. supper, that's the mm -hmm. great one. And the first video I ever did was John making those cat head biscuits and I know a lot of y'all have seen that, but he was so camera shy then. Um, he only let me film the bowl and everything and not him so this time we thought we'd do it again and i don't think it shows the finished product on there because at the time i didn't know how to put videos together so um we're gonna do it again, we'll do it again. with some grits and a big ham steak and some gravy and is that all i think that's it with your big and old biscuits. cathead biscuits yeah. yeah that sounds good doesn't it <laughs> okay guys i'm gonna move over here and he's gonna show us how he does it all right y'all I got two cameras going here trying to capture John's Papaw's Cathead Biscuits. First thing we're going to do. Talk loud so everybody can hear you, First baby. First thing we're going to do is I'm going <laughs> to put a little of this bacon grease over here for gravy later. Okay. Yeah. Your bacon gravy you make. And then I'm going to put some in here in this pan that we're going to cook the biscuits in. Okay. And you make these biscuits because you watched your Papaw making these yep. biscuits, when huh? I was, when I was a little boy... My papa made biscuits every morning for the family. That was his contribution. That's so neat. And you grew up in your papa's home with your mom and daddy and yep. sister, and that's really neat too. Yep. A lot of kids would love that. Now this is going to be about three tablespoons total. Uh, of Crisco? Of Crisco. Or shortening, I guess yep. we should say. Okay. And How yep. much bacon grease did you put in there, baby? Probably a tablespoon full. Okay. And then two tablespoons full of Crisco. Okay. It'll be sure it should be about three total. And that may vary just a little bit, not much. Okay. And I'm gonna have to listen to all that so I can put the um recipe in the description box on YouTube and under the title on Facebook so people can have it. I'm gonna get four cups of flour. Four cups of flour, okay. Reason why I started doing these videos is because so many of John's friends grew up they would ride bikes and motorcycles and four-wheelers and whatever Peppa had left over would sit out in the kitchen and all those kids in the neighborhood they're grown now they all remember running in the house with John and grabbing a biscuit and running back out the door so they all want to know how to make one so bad so they could just taste it so john finally figured out the recipe okay and i see you've got the fire on heating it up fire okay on right now we're just just letting that melt and okay then we're going just cut that off for a second okay and now you did put about a tablespoon of bacon grease back there to make gravy, to with, make gravy with okay later, yeah. what what number is that cast iron about an eight okay so all right now now we're going to see a full cup of flour and what kind of flour is this, baby? Just, uh... <laughs> all purpose. All it's purpose. all purpose. <laughs> Sounds like it's flour. <laughs> <laughs> I just know some questions everybody asks. All right. yeah. You watch, and I, I missed that. I said it earlier, but you watched your Peppa. You grew up in the house with your Peppa and your mama and daddy yep. and your sister, and you watched him. When did he make these, baby? When I was a small child, I was I was so small I couldn't see the top of the stove, so I had to sit in a, <laughs> a stand in a chair. Yeah. Watching. How often did he make them? Every single morning. Every single morning. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I started filming you. Very first video I think we did was me filming these because you had so many friends that would ride four wheelers and motorcycles and bicycles with you. And they remembered these biscuits, grabbing one and running back out the door, and so... There was usually four or five left out of a pan. Yeah. And uh, Mama would just cover them with a cloth and leave them on the table. Yeah, yeah. And we would come through and 
just get a biscuit by itself or get mama to warm us one up and put some butter on it or yeah. some peanut butter when it's cold it was good yeah and that's just that was our afternoon snack and it was it was great it was great and all those guys wanted to know how to do that now yeah. what all of you added so far we hadn't added anything yet okay i'm fixing to put a heaping tablespoon of baking powder okay and this is what i call a heaping a heaping tablespoon show us okay got it that's what i would call a heaping too or a generous tablespoon yeah. sure would Teaspoon of salt. Who are some of the boys? One teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of salt. Okay. Brad Mott, he was one of them, Brad wasn't he? Mott, BJ Mott, Mott. Rob Booker. Rob Booker. Aaron, Aaron Booker. Booker. What right. you putting now, baby? This is this is baking powder, and again, we're gonna put a heap in one in there. A heap in what? One teaspoon. Teaspoon. One heap in teaspoon of baking. Soda. Soda. And you put a heaping tablespoon of baking powder, right? right. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to keep this recipe straight in my brain so I can put it for everybody. All the dry ingredients. Good. All the dry ingredients you're whisking together. Yeah, yeah. kind of like if you sifted them. I do that too, baby. Sure do. Or something else I was going to say, and now I have forgotten. Oh well. Oh well. All right. What you got now? A little buttermilk here. Okay. Now, this this right here is is the part that I can't exactly get a measurement for because Papa never had a measurement. He didn't use a measuring cup. Right. He put <clears throat> he put as much in there as it took to make it sound sticky sticky when you're stirring it. okay but now are you going to pour it in a measuring cup so we can kind of okay so i can get y'all really close. okay okay good deal we'll work with that we sure right. will go ahead and put two in there two cups two cups of buttermilk okay and then pour you a third okay so two to three cups of buttermilk is what we're going to work with okay yeah. and we're going to listen for stickiness. My arms are getting tired. I feel Ooh. I feel for the cameraman. I'm telling you. Do you hear a stickiness yet, baby? Yeah. You do? Right now I hear it. Okay. Let me get down here and see if we can hear it. I barely hear the stickiness. Can y'all hear it? Just barely. That's not as sticky as it that normally is, is. That is about... There's not even... There's not even a... So that's almost that's almost three cups. Almost three cups. So two and is it almost to a quarter cup? No. No. So two and al almost three. Almost three. Okay. Now. So I could probably say two and a half or two and three quarters to yeah. three cups. Okay. Okay. Now we'll come back over here. To the stove. We'll cut this back off. Right. We'll just put it on low heat. Okay. We're going to get this pan on oh, it all the way up the side if you can. Because these biscuits will stick. Okay. We'll come out of the pan for it. Okay. This is an old timey recipe that I'm glad you're showing everybody. I'm glad you and your, your sister and you figured it out yeah. again, didn't you? We did. Because it's getting lost. Mm -hmm. Some of these old recipes are just lost. Take about 
two good splashes and just put them over in the biscuits. Okay. Two good splashes over yeah. in one spot on the biscuits. Okay. Yeah. Now, we're just going to dip them out. And every time we dip one out, we're going to coat them in oil. Coat them in oil, okay. Mm -hmm. Looking good. What you got your oven heated to, baby? I had not <laughs> Uh-oh. Matter of fact, I need to do that right this Yeah, second. I'm going to turn this off and we better heat that oven. Okay, darling. Now, what have you got your oven heating to? <laughs> 450. 450 degrees, okay. That's going to be a hot oven for these little biscuits. Mm, it is. I've always heard that the hotter you cook your biscuits, the more tender they'll be on the inside. So that's just what I've heard. I've never done a couple of trial and errors to see. I see them, they're starting to fry a little bit down in that mm -hmm. pan. Mmm, getting them a good crust. We were at church today this morning, y'all, and um, Miss Russell, she told us that she made these biscuits and they turned out good, and we've known a lot of other people that's made them and sent us pictures and, and are loving it. And so we thought we would do it again, especially the first time I filmed. I, I didn't. I we tried to go live that time, didn't we, baby? We, did. we, we did. live out here in the country, <laughs> and well, live doesn't work real well. well. Yeah. No, it just turns off. I see what you do when you kind of making room for yeah. one more biscuit. And every time you spoon a little bit more of your mm -hmm. melted grease and bacon grease, huh? Yeah, so you can. Putting that all, putting that coating all the way around, and make them turn loose with one another when they get ready to come out of the pan. Yeah, yeah, sure does. Right, the rest of these guys got to move over a little bit now. We got one more. Scooch, everybody, pan. scooch. Yeah. There we go. They made room yeah. for it. Yes, they did. And we just kind of level them out. Okay. You all notice how it's bubbling around the edges like that? Yes. We're going we're gonna to crank that up till we get it good, just like that, all the way around, and we're going to stick it in the oven. Okay. It's looking good. <clears throat> so you want it to start bubbling on around there, too? Mm hmm Okay. Well, we're watching. That gets that crust started real good. Okay. How long does it usually take? It usually, it usually doesn't take long at all. Seems like it just has more grease on that side mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. It's starting. It's starting. It's coming on over. Is it coming on mm -hmm. over? Yeah. Getting bubbly everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're putting a real good crust on the bottom yeah. of those biscuits. You sure are. I keep dipping one camera in front of the other. Sorry, y'all. So sorry. Y'all see the size of these biscuits? I won't call out of my friend's name, but I invited a friend over that <laughs> I do a lot of work with and for. <laughs> and uh, made a big breakfast like this for us one morning. And he sit there and ate three of them dudes. <laughs> now, I won't tell y'all, that is a big biscuit. You look at the size of my hand and look at that biscuit. We'll have to show I was, everybody. I was impressed. I was like, boy, he was hungry. He was hungry. <laughs> and your biscuits must have been real good too. You won't call him out, but I will, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nathan don't care. He don't uh, care. He don't care. You so y'all would go fishing about, too, wouldn't yeah. you? And you would take them fishing. Mm -hmm. Is that getting about that's about, about ready. ready? It is. It's about oh, ready. Oh, I see the little bubbles mm -hmm. on that side. Sure do. Yeah. Cool. It's okay. About ready. Okay. I'm going to back out of your way, John Mary. Yes, I am. Four hundred fifty degrees. Okay. And about how long do your biscuits go, baby, in here? Just approximately, well, and then about, we'll... About 28 minutes. About 28 minutes, okay. So I would say 28 to 30. Probably do us a good measurement of time. All right, going in. We'll see y'all in 28 minutes. All right, y'all. We've got everybody over here to the stove, and you're going to show us, baby, that you're going to start some 
some gravy for our biscuits. Yeah. We're going to use a number eight cast iron skillet. Okay. I've got a heaping tablespoon of Crisco in there, and I've got about a teaspoon of bacon grease in there. I normally use just bacon grease, but since we use it in a lot of things, we're a little low on it. <laughs> yeah, we are a little low. I, I had to steal a little bitty bit back for us to cook our ham steak. <laughs> I put one cup of water in this little um, pan right here for us to make some grits. We'll let that get up to um, pretty hot boiling for us. And then I'm going to put a pinch of salt in there, just like that pinch of salt and something that makes your grits a little creamier what do I do with my milk there it is I love to put milk in there as well and that's a half a cup so we'll get that in there all right darling we got this pan heating up we can get our ham steak in here can't we baby while this is heating up, I'm going to um, hope everybody can see everything. Can they see that over there? I believe yeah, they can. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I'm going to pour what little bit. I had to go put this bacon grease jar in the microwave just to get out <laughs> what was stuck just to the side. Yeah. What we some, some people have told me that you can actually order bacon grease, baby. I'll tell you, as much of it we use, we might not look <laughs> into that. Yeah. Really? We probably don't need to order it, huh? We just probably need to be not. out sometimes. Not. Right? Oh, yeah, that pan's looking really good. Would you get me a um, ham grabber? Thank you, darling. Right here. We got us a pretty ham steak. Doesn't he look good? Let's see if he makes some noise. Ooh, he did. Thank you, baby. He made some good noise, guys. He sure did. Now okay, what are you doing, buddy? We're gonna start putting flour in here. You're gonna how much about that's about a quarter cup of flour, quarter isn't it? Cup, yep. And how much uh shortening did you have in there, darling? Maybe a quarter cup. Maybe a quarter cup. Yeah, because you need equal amounts. I bet it, it did look like a quarter cup and you had what, a teaspoon of bacon grease mm -hmm. in it just for some flavor. Yep. But you normally like to do all bacon grease. Yeah, usually I do because I don't I don't uh, use beef broth. That bacon grease flavors it yeah. as a breakfast meal. Right. Me. Sure does. All right, this milk and water is getting real good. We've got a cup of milk and a half a cup. I mean, a cup of water and a half a cup of milk. I'll get it straight in a minute, guys. And I've got some grits. These are old-fashioned long cooking grits and of course I keep them in a canister and again <laughs> I'm gonna do one of your measurements baby right. I do a heaping would you take that from me darling thank you baby a heaping quarter cup of grits and I'm gonna whisk them as I pour them in there that way they won't get lumpy on us just like that. I need the salt. When you, get it you need the salt, baby? Okay. Do you want this big salt container or do you want... Okay, so you put some salt in there? About, about how much? About half a teaspoon. About half a teaspoon? Okay. Half a teaspoon. Okay. Then we're going to put about four cranks of pepper in there. About four cranks of pepper. So you need mm -hmm. the pepper too, don't you, darling? All right, y'all see these grits are kind of starting to get bubbly. I'm going to turn them down on low for a little bit and let them go. They're going to go 15-20 minutes before they absorb all of that liquid in there. And I put also I'm going to put some butter. Maybe a couple of tablespoons. And then I love this Philadelphia cream cheese. It's wonderful in some grits. Last time we made breakfast it was a long time back and I just did breakfast of uh i was really just wanting to get your biscuits <laughs> right and so we had all this other stuff cooking like these grits and some people got 
fussy. They said, uh, well, well, how did you do those grits? What's the measurements and everything? And to be honest with y'all, John and I don't measure. Um, we just pour milk and water or water. If you don't have milk, you can just do water. That's perfectly fine, too. But normally, we just pour and stir. So we're trying to do better. Yes, we are. But I know a lot of y'all know all that. But I do need to come up with a recipe for it. Yes, I do. I do. I kind of appreciate the fact that y'all have pushed me and make me write some of these recipes down because um, there's many, many, many things that I cook and don't have recipes for. So. so, let's get back down here and look at this ham steak. He might be getting ready to flip and just check him, huh, baby? You reckon? Let's see. Let's look. Yeah. Now, he, we like him toasty, toasty, yeah. don't we? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. He can just keep at it. And we will come back. Um, these grits, like I say, 15, 20 minutes. Just keep stirring them, making sure they're not sticking. I've got them in this Capilon non-stick pan. But they'll, grits don't care what kind of pan they're in. They'll still stick if they want yeah, to. Yeah, they will. <laughs> they said, you can give me any pan you want. I don't care. Don't care. It's hard on this YouTube camera to make sure I've got everything in there. I've got some of the grits and I think most of your um, gravy. Yeah, explain. You're making a roux, aren't you, baby? A gravy roux. It sure is looking good. Smelling good, too. I wish everybody could smell this. That's the one thing I wish. Y'all see, I'm just kind of stirring on these grits is that you literally could help a plate or a little portion for everybody and just hand everybody mm -hmm. some. That would be just the neatest thing. It sounds impossible, but lots of things have happened that's impossible. <laughs> so you never know. You never know. Or at least be able to smell it. Huh? Oh, your roof's looking good, yeah, baby. Close, yeah. You're getting dark. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a rich, great, that's flavor right there, darling. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to check this one more time. See what he's looking like. He still needs to cook a little longer. Some people like him kind of like that, but you and I kind of like him toastier, don't we? We do. We do. We're just like him a little toaster. I'm going to flip him one time. I'll there flip him go. back around. He's split in half on us. He looks like two angel wings, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> How neat. It's time for the water. It's time for the water? Okay, time darling. Water. All right. So you've got, you've got two cups of water. We'll see yeah. how much you use. And that's a just really a preference of how um, liquidy you want your gravy in mm -hmm. and how loose you want it. And if you get too much water in there and you wanted it to be thicker, don't. Don't worry about it. You just cook it down a little Keep while, don't you? It and it'll go away. Yeah. Like right cool. now, this is like way too much water, but we're gonna let it simmer for 20 minutes or so. Yeah, while the biscuits while are the cooking, biscuits aren't cooking. we? Yeah. And it'll be just about right by the time the biscuits are done. Yes. That cast iron skillet is perfect for a ham steak. It really is. I love it. Where did I get that? Did I get that from um, Pampered Chef? I or did I get it at Thomas Nursery? <laughs> I don't. I liked it because it was kind of deep, and I could cook in it. And then it had these um, handles on the side. I just liked it. Oh, you hadn't even seen one cast iron thing I've got, baby. <laughs> uh -oh. You know I'm all about the cast iron. Look, oh. look, John hadn't even seen this. I've got then. That That's cornbread maker. I thought I'd make it some crawfish cornbread with some crawfish mm. gravy. Man, good as cornbread you make, that'd be awesome. So that's going to be a little preview of a recipe coming up another day. Another day. Okay, I'm going to turn everybody off so they won't have to sit here and just watch gravy and grits cook. And we'll come back. Y'all, it's not been just a few minutes or a couple minutes even. And y'all see how... These are starting to absorb all the liquid in there and get creamy looking. Um, so, I'm going to turn the fire down on low 
and I'm going to put the top and I might just cock it off to the side a little bit or put it on there. It won't matter one way or another, but if you cock it to the side, it lets some more moisture maybe evaporate. And on low, and I'm just going to check it every few minutes and let it go probably, what, about 10 more minutes. It has been about 10 more minutes, guys, so altogether about 15 right now. But we put them in hot water and milk, you know, to kind of jump start that. Y'all see how nice and creamy these grits are? Very, very, very creamy. Let's see. I need a spoon to show y'all. And the thickness of them. And again, grits are kind of like, you might like them a little thicker, you might like them a little thinner. And I've got this cream cheese in a little tub, and I'm going to put a teaspoon or so of it. Just two teaspoons there. And then I've got my butter right here. And I'm going to put just a couple of little tiny teaspoons of those too. You can put as much or as little as you want. So no worries. And you don't have to put the cream cheese, but it just makes it really, really creamy. When I make shrimp and grits, I use this. They've got this in the store with jalapenos in it. Oh my goodness, and it's so good. And if they don't, you could just chop a few jalapenos real tiny. Now, even creamier. Y'all, let me see if y'all can tell the difference. You see, that's even creamier. Yum! I have turned the fire off. And I'm just going to put the lid on let them stay warm. Because our biscuits have about seven more minutes left. Um, can y'all see John's gravy back here? Let's see. Let me move y'all up a little bit. There we are. There we are. I think everybody can see it. See his gravy, gravy is cooking down some here. You're gravy. What is gravy? I don't know. That just going to be just right time. Just right by the time the biscuits come out, huh, baby? That's right. Okay, guys. I'm going to get the table set, and I'll see y'all back. All right, we're checking them at, what, about 20, 27 minutes. Ooh, those are really done. I think those are going to be done. Now, how are you checking them, baby? That's what. Run that, run that fork down between that middle biscuit. Uh huh. Or pick a, a big biscuit like that one. Yeah. And if it's dry, they're done. And they're done, huh, baby? They are done. That just come out. It's going to be great. Like that right there. Look at there. They did come out. Yeehaw. Those look fabulous, darling. We're at the table with y'all. John's going to bless the food for us. Tim, Father, I just ask you to bless this meal. Lord, just please just. Forgive us where we fail you. Be with us, Lord. Be with the people in our prayers, Lord. Be with our nation. We just love you so much, Lord, and thank you for the day. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, baby. Let's enjoy. You, we got some good looking stuff out here, yes, don't we? we do. You yes. fix your plate how you do it, darling. I want to tell everybody about these napkins. Um, you see these pretty little napkins? This came out of John's grandmother had a canning kitchen here on this piece of property years ago, 28 years ago when I started dating you. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time I'd heard of a canning kitchen. I thought that was the neatest thing ever because I like to do separate cooking like canning and things that make a big mess in the kitchen. And so I thought that would be great to have a separate area for that. And so since then i wanted one and i got one what last year you got yep, it all up for me so, <laughs> year. so 20 good. something years later i got one and i'm so thankful to have it but in her old canning kitchen and i would have loved to have kept that but once we started it was in ruins wasn't it baby it everything had been moth eaten and it was infested with rats and so everything was ruined in there and do y'all remember those flour sacks and those sugar sacks from back in way back maybe the 40s and and before that that they would come in those big old bags and it would actually be fabric well out of a miracle i guess there was a stack about that deep wasn't it of this fabric and in it 
with some of these sacks in this fabric and not touched with anything but heavy stuff was on it and I guess it was so compacted that no um, moths could get to it or anything so we saved those out of there and then took it to my mother who sews and loves to sew and she made me an apron and she made me napkins dinner napkins or breakfast napkins or whatever I'll come show y'all up close in case y'all mm. can't see this and I want y'all to see it it's just precious to me and to me I feel like it's brought John's family together with my family because this came from John's grandmother and my mother made these napkins for us and so I'm just tickled 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 that we got these and so that's what we're going to use this evening with y'all we're going to have a little something special out for us you going to tell them about this spoon oh that spoon yes that gravy spoon I worked at the veterinarian clinic for years um close to 13 years in town before our business got to where I just had to quit um, and I would go pick up on Friday mornings I would go pick up um, dogs at our local assisted living um, facility the Arbor Rose and they would usually be animals that we had seen throughout the years and then the person would get um, where they needed to go into assisted living so we I would go pick up the dogs and um, bring them back to the vet's office and give them their bath and trim their little toenails and if they needed shots the doctor would give them shots or if they were having any kind of medical issues the doctors would see them like that so we took care of them and one little lady wanted so desperately to give me something and she didn't have anything to give me but she had a handful of those spoons will you hold it back up baby and she said i this is all i have to give you i want to give you something special for taking good care of my dog and she gave me that little spoon and little did she know and i told her that is perfect because i love spoons and i love dishes and i love especially a sweet story going with it so and I brought it home and that became John's favorite gravy spoon. I love spoon. that gravy spoon. I love it. <laughs> so that's his gravy spoon, but it has a story behind it and it's really sweet. And I do miss that. I do miss going and seeing them and talking with them and seeing their puppy dogs in there. Um, but anyway, I think that's all the stories we had to tell, huh, it. baby? You've already it. got your gravy. This is how John does it. He breaks his biscuit up and <clears> puts <throat> gravy on it. Did you make me a little biscuit, baby? Is I did. I made be? you a little biscuit right there. Hey, I said everybody I'd, I'd pick this up. Let's pick that biscuit up and show everybody how big that biscuit is. Did Nathan eat one that big, baby? He ate, he ate two and a half that big. Uh-oh. He did. Come on, biscuit. Turn loose. Y'all look how big that biscuit is. Is that not crazy? <laughs> look, my hand will hide behind it. Gracious! I guess that's why they call these biscuits cat head biscuits. I guess it is. I guess it is. I guess. Would you put me some gravy I on there, baby? Know. And yes. I know you want milk and orange juice, right? Yes. yes. John yes. likes a lot of things to drink with his food. He um he always has lots and lots to drink. I'll get you some orange juice too. There you go, baby. Thank you, baby. Thank you, darling. Thank you for these good biscuits and gravy. It's so comforting on a at night to yeah. sit down and eat this, isn't it? Mm, yeah. You know you're going to sleep good. You want some grits, I darling? I do, baby. Some of these creamy grits. Mm -hmm. Is that That's good? Right. That's good. John used to eat... Um, Milk and sugar. Milk, sugar. Milk and sugar on mm -hmm. his grits. He sure did. But um, he tried to cut back after a while. He used to drink sugar in his coffee. So he said, I need to quit that. So now you just eat it. What would you say? You grew up? I, I tried to grow up a little. <laughs> now I just overeat some. Well, so now you just <clears throat> eat them like me, huh? Yeah. With some butter and a little butter. bit of cream cheese. Yeah. Ooh, we got to get us some, some ham some steak. Ham? There's yes. A, there's a big piece on the bottom that you're going to eat. I see that. I was going to give you the big piece, baby. Yeah. Oh, you got you I a got big piece, piece already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it sounds like we just need to get to eating, doesn't yeah, it? Does it? Let's taste some bites for everybody. Mmm. Mm. 
Mm. I'm cutting into your biscuit like it's a big old piece of steak. Mm. Mm. Do you see we just poured the gravy right over that biscuit? And then for dessert, you can put some, let me see your cane syrup. For dessert, we'll take another biscuit or maybe save a piece of this biscuit and pour a little cane, sugar cane syrup over it and eat it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This has got all kinds of recipes on the back. I make a cake out of this. It's an old recipe from this community. Mm -hmm. Out of our brother-in-law's mama's cookbook. And it's made with pure cane syrup. And I'm going to do that for y'all really, really soon. Y'all don't let me forget. Y'all keep reminding me. And, and I will. It's an old time. And that pecan pie. And, pecan pie. and the pecan and pie. pie. And I make a pecan pie that I do with that. And John loves that. So he's he's sticking his little hint in too. <laughs> Bye-bye, y'all. Y'all have a good week.